Mr. Baldridge, there's a whole lot of properties that have been conveyed to your company where people are dead. Deed fraud? It's pretty easy to do. I just take them the paper, give them the money, and that's it. Nothing sacred. Please get out of my face. For those accused of stealing a property, not even a church. I bought the building. Whitney Foster had said he had bought the property for $10. It's not true to buy the property. It makes no sense. Since 2019, our Dirty Deeds investigations exposed thieves stealing churches, houses, a restaurant, and even a former Sam's Club. They're trying to sell it quickly, make a quick buck. What'd you buy with the money? A couple houses. I couldn't believe it. They're forging people's signatures on property deeds, filing them with the county clerk, and taking control of property they don't own. This was not just little bitty fraud, this was big fraud. It's painful, it makes you angry. In some cases, they even forge the signatures of dead people. How come all these people that are dead are signing documents as if they've been alive? Workstation one. Whenever someone buys or sells a property, documents must be filed with the county clerk. Uh, we take cash, check, or card, yes ma'am. Our responsibility is to make sure that we are accepting documents for, for recordation. Those we refer to as official public records. Workstation one. This is the standard form for a warranty deed, a general warranty deed in Texas. When you submit this document, they're just saying, okay, we have the grantor, and we have the name and address of the grantee, and we have what appears to be a validly notarized signature. So you're not doing anything beyond that? No, we're not. There is no way for us to do anything more than what the law requires. It turns out when someone files a property deed with the county clerk, no one's routinely checking to see if it's legit. How many documents do you get here? In our office, close to a half a million documents a year that we record. It would be literally impossible to make sure that there was no fraudulent intent to determine if it's a clean deed or a dirty deed. I don't have the resources to do that. Once it's recorded, as a matter of public record, you're the new owner. Our investigation found thieves often pick vacant and neglected properties. The individuals target these properties because they're in that status. The thieves figure the real owners aren't paying attention. They forge the signature of the true owner. They have to get the document notarized. And once you do that, following the document is really simple. Properties that are affected by this really run the gamut. Abandoned homes to multi-million dollar homes, commercial or retail property. It all depends on just how brazen the fraudster wants to be. We thought Dallas County had just lost their mind, <laughs> that they had just messed up, that somehow it was some clerical error. In 2019, the First Christian Church of Lancaster found out from the appraisal district they no longer owned their church property. Someone named Whitney Foster now owned it. The church wouldn't be up for sale, it was never up for sale. Church members found this deed claiming that a church chairman signed the property away to Foster for $10. Did you recognize that name, Whitney Foster? I really didn't, but the first thing I did is I went on Facebook looking for the name. And I said, this guy has been here. He actually tendered a $10 check to our church in the offering plate. Your church wasn't for sale for $10? No. No one with the church knew the supposed church chairman. When we talked to Dallas County, they said their job is not to make sure it's accurate. Really? <laughs> That's not part of your job? I can file something fraudulent, and as long as it's got the signatures or it's notarized, y'all can just take it and believe it? It makes no sense. Something is seriously wrong with this system. Foster is the pastor of True Foundation Non-Denominational Church in Dallas. Here he is preaching on that church's Facebook page. Mr. Foster? Yes. Foster talked to us by phone. We asked him about his purchase of First Christian Church. Was your $10 check to buy the property? 
Yes, it's in our to buy the property. Tell me how you think legally you can acquire a property that way. Because, listen, the church is community property. Well, I was going to open up a church there. He claimed that the church was abandoned. No one was returning his calls, and he had ownership of it because apparently his $10 donation went through. Our lawyers made contact with him. The attorney sent him a, a demand letter, and he signed over to it. I called him and talked to him. When that detective called me, I told him, yes, sir, I signed back over. Fine. I wanted my $10 check back. A grand jury indicted Foster on a theft charge. Come see a man! He goes on trial in early 2023. The audacity of this gentleman to come and worship with us, to do this against a church. I would not want to meet my maker in having done something like that. It's a difficult problem to combat. It's remarkably easy to forge a deed. The government relies on people being honest because most of us are honest. One of the problems, proper ID isn't always needed to file a deed. Well, imagine finding out a house that's been in your family for decades was taken. After WFA exposed the deed fraud problem, Texas lawmakers did take some action. Two years ago, they gave the state's 10 largest counties the authority to ask for ID from people trying to file property sale documents. How would requiring photo ID help? What this would do would allow us to begin an investigation at a strong point. Who filed this fraudulent deed? I think it will also give some people pause, and they may just decide not to file that fraudulent deed. We wanted to know if counties were actually doing it. Four told us they do require ID, but Dallas County and five others tell us they are not asking for photo ID. They say the law remains unclear. Although clerks may ask for ID, legislators left this confusing line in the law. A county clerk may not refuse to file a document. So in January, when the legislature meets, lawmakers will be asked to strengthen the ID requirement. I think the ID requirement is very helpful for anybody who shows up in person. They still have people who need to send in documents in the mail, and so you don't have that safeguard in place anymore. Did you know what you were involved in was wrong? At first, I didn't. The law wouldn't have stopped someone like Arnaldo Ortiz. We caught up with Ortiz at the Dallas County Jail. He was serving a 10-year prison sentence for filing fraudulent deeds, stealing property. I'm not gonna lie, the money was good. Mr. Ortiz, he was a young man, 18, 19 years old when he started doing this, intelligent. This special agent investigated Ortiz. He sometimes works undercover, so we're concealing his identity. We're still unsure of how he learned how to do this or if somebody taught him to do this. He ended up selling several properties for profit. Lived a luxurious life? Yeah. But other people got hurt in that, right? He deeded over 25 properties in the Dallas-Fort Worth area, including single-family homes, several commercial properties, including a Walmart, a Sam's Club, and a Burger King. It was an estimated value over $18 million that he deeded over to himself or entities that he controlled. It was so easy, Ortiz was able to still file fraudulent deeds from behind bars. Mailing the documents to the county clerk and gaining control of four houses. You're mailing the deeds from the jail. Why would you do that? We obtained this interrogation video where agents asked Ortiz about those four stolen houses. We want to understand why you keep sending warranty deed changes to the county clerk's office. Investigators found he mailed checks from his inmate account to pay for the deed transfers. You're not the rightful owner of those properties. My people think they're the rightful owners. Ortiz had plans of his own for this house. That's why I'm going to parole to when I get out. So you think you can just go back there and live there? I mean, technically I can. You're getting bad legal advice. How did Ortiz do this from prison? It has to do with notaries. Think of them as professional witnesses. The real estate market relies on notaries to watch people sign documents and verify identities. But we found gaps in the notary system too. They get it notarized with a notary public who is in their pocket 
or they are their own notary, or they fake the notarization. There are all kinds of ways. Investigators found Ortiz had unrelated court documents notarized in the Dallas County Jail. Then he took that notary stamp and used it to steal homes with forged deed records. Having that original notary stamp, they have computers available. He was able to cut and paste it somehow. All right, bye. It was a pretty remarkable story. If this young 18, 19 year old person had only been focused on something productive and lawful, Ortiz would be a very successful person today. In some instances, the notary is the accused thief. We'd sure like to talk to you, sir, before this hearing. Like this man, real estate investor William Baldridge. Did you ever meet David Keel or Cynthia Peters? Do you know these people? He notarized documents used to steal a home in Houston belonging to deceased Korean War veteran John Keel. See this document? It says a man named David Keel was the veteran's son and heir to the home. However, military records say John Keel never had a son named David. You ever meet David Keel? Notarized documents Would you indicating. Get some space? We're just trying to get your side, sir. Would you, get some space? Would you please get out of my face? Our Dirty Deeds investigation found that forged signatures of dead people allowed Baldridge's companies to take ownership of houses in Houston and Dallas. He later sold some of those properties, including the house that belonged to Francis Dickerson. Dickerson died in 1977. But in 2018, 41 years later, someone signed his name on a property deed in Dallas County, handing the family home to a company owned by Baldridge. It was devastating news. This is Paul Dodson, Dickerson's great-grandson. I was floored. I really could not believe that the home had been sold. Someone also forged the signature of his grandmother and his great-grandmother. Both also died years ago. They probably weren't signing deeds in 2018. No, not at all. There's no chance. A Dallas County grand jury indicted Baldridge in 2021. He's accused of stealing 20 properties in three counties, selling 17 of them, and pocketing more than $1.1 million. He remains out on bail awaiting trial. It's just a shame that he would go to this length to try to take money out of pockets of people who don't have a lot to give in the first place. Next. You have his signature there. The challenge victims face, trying to get their property back. These things can take a long time. It's painful, it makes you angry. It's easy to do deed fraud, but it's hard to undo it once it's occurred. You're looking at potentially years of litigation. Litigation's never fun, it's never quick. The law requires victims go through the civil courts to regain control of their property. Until they do, the real owners can't sell it or use it as collateral to get a loan. These things can take a long time, can be very difficult, can be expensive. They put all of the correcting it on the people that have been wronged. Remember First Christian Church? They finally got their property back in February 2021. You have to spend the money. You have to secure a lawyer. That makes no sense. Many victims don't have the time or money to fight deed fraud. I grew up here, born and raised. That's certainly the problem facing Shabronda Ray. Matter of fact, I was born in that room back there. <laughs> it's the Dallas house her late grandmother bought in 1973 and left to her family. I tried to get a repair done, and they said, it's not in your name. That's when I found out. Someone filed a deed transferring ownership of Shabronda's house to a man named Eric Michael Serrano. WFA found him already in prison for stealing a house in Tarrant County. We're investigating with the DA's office. Yes, sir. WFA obtained interrogation video of detectives interviewing Serrano back in 2019. He was actually detained inside the Tarrant County Clerk's office trying to file another fraudulent deed. There's a couple of properties that's just been filed and your name's all on it. 
Serrano told investigators he was just doing what someone else told him to do. They told me it was all legit. That Who told you? It's some guy I really don't know. I just met him and he said if he could use my name to sell houses. Serrano is still in prison for deed fraud and on paper still owns Shabranda's family home in Dallas. It crossed my mind that Eric Serrano may try to say, hey, this is my house, you need to start paying me rent. An affidavit of heirship. But we have plenty of documented proof that he obtained the house illegally. Shabranda filed a police report with the Dallas Police Department last summer. They just told you it was a civil matter? Yes. Police all but closed the case. That's it, that's all. After we pressed Dallas police on what we found, they finally took another look and have found evidence of deed fraud. He, he spoke at the front you might ask, what if you had a will? Could that protect you from deed fraud? Definitely. Yeah, that's one, yeah. Another family outing. The family of Arnold Young would say no. I'm angry, hurt. Young was a retired Dallas school teacher. They've been fighting for nearly two years to get his property back. You know, these people are, they monsters. He died of prostate cancer in early 2021 and left his family a small real estate empire, or so they thought. Arnold meticulously listed his heirs in a 2014 will, designating his niece, Audrey Hogg, as executor. But within weeks of Arnold's death, Hogg learned someone filed paperwork transferring ownership of nine houses valued at more than a million dollars. Arnold Young allegedly signed the deeds. One transferred ownership to a tenant. The other eight houses were signed over to a nonprofit called Mutual Freedom. We found it registered to a mailbox here at a UPS store in Dallas. The deeds were dated July 8, 2020, just seven months before Arnold Young's death at 82. So this is his signature here on the check. Okay. Young's niece says she knew immediately it was not her uncle's signature. Here's his signature on a 2017 check. This is his signature on one of the deeds. The notary on the deeds, Belinda Tucker. Tucker and her husband founded Mutual Freedom, the nonprofit that claimed ownership of eight of the houses. And all my 52 years of living, my uncle never said anything about the Tuckers. Now that the Tuckers own these homes, they decided to evict the tenants who lived there when Young owned them. Benny Williams got one of those vacate notices. She rented from Arnold Young for 40 years. He told me if I gave him my word I would pay my rent, he would take my word. Benny says Belinda Tucker and a locksmith showed up to change the locks soon after she got her vacate notice. I spoke with Miss Tucker on the phone, and she told me she was coming. I said, you cannot go in my house. I said, if you go in my house, I said, I'm going to have you arrested. Belinda Tucker refused to answer our questions, but did agree to read a statement to WFA last year. It must be explicitly understood that there is no deed fraud. My husband and I are merely the victims of false allegations by a disgruntled family member. She supposedly met him at a charity event. Is there any evidence she knew him? Nothing. Once the Tuckers owned the homes, they sold one of them. Here's where we uncovered another layer of deed fraud victims, the unsuspecting buyers of these stolen homes. This person who's buying it thinks they're getting a deal. They have no reason to think that it's not legitimate. Do you have a property that's causing you financial or physical stress? Real estate investor Andrew Howard runs ads on a local radio station offering to buy homes. He bought one from Belinda Tucker. Went through the whole process, went to the title company, actually saw Belinda at the title company on the day of closing. She said hi to us as we were leaving. Howard closed on the property knowing a tenant still lived in the home. So we went to talk to her the next day. That didn't go, that didn't go well at all. That tenant, Benny Williams. She met me at the door and told me that Belinda didn't own the property, so I couldn't possibly own it. That left Howard and his wife with a loan on a house they did not actually own. What we would like to happen is for it to not be so easy for people to steal property. <laughs> because, I mean, we want to buy it, but we want to buy it from the rightful owners. Belinda Tucker is now awaiting trial on two felony theft indictments. For them to come in and just take what he built for his family, it's painful, it makes you angry. So far, the legal battle to get back Young's houses has cost $80,000.
The Good Deed Act might be one way to help victims, though. Congressman Emanuel Cleaver filed legislation that would set aside $10 million a year to help victims of deed fraud anywhere in the country. To get funding, states will be required to pass laws making it harder to steal property. It also required the FBI to create a crime category to track deed fraud. In a land of ours where we put so much emphasis on owning a home or owning your own property, people can steal it so easily. I think we need to do a better job working with our local state partners and other federal agencies to investigate these cases. You can't probably fix everything. No. I mean, forgery has been around as long as time. There's really no way to completely eliminate it. And it's taking place everywhere in the country. Any city that believes it's not taking place is just simply not paying attention. <laughs>